Hi everybody. I can more or less guarantee, unless you're into making your own candles or stoves, you've never thought about this at all. And it's this, the wick and a candle. A wick and a candle actually is incredibly important. And it's called a wick because it exhibits a property called wicking. It's a bit of coffee filter. Wicking is a capillary action. It's that ability of a material to pull a liquid up through its length. And there we go. We can see if I dip it in the coffee, it's gone this far. This filter paper can pull that fluid that far, and that's the action of wicking. Now, lots of materials will do that. Traditionally, in these things, it's actually um, just cotton. They make it fireproof by soaking it in borax and sometimes table salt, and that gives it a fire resistance as a fireproofness, because, of course, these things do burn away. So they need two properties. One, the ability to pull the fluid as high as possible. Two, resist burning for as long as possible because it's only the fluid you want to burn. Now, unfortunately, wicking is dependent on the viscosity of the fluid. So when it's a light fluid, it can wick a long way, which is why kerosene lamps have these huge wicks that we saw in the previous video, because Kerosene is quite light, it can wick a long way. But oils like vegetable oil and motor oil, they're pretty viscous, so they're not going to wick very far. Which means if you use vegetable oil in a kerosene lamp, there's no chance you're going to be able to light it, because it just can't wick. Now, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a magical material that could wick a light oil or a heavy oil and could be incredibly resistant to burning? Well, guess what? It doesn't look like much, does it? I mean, you know, we've got something stuck in a pool of liquid and it's burning with a sooty flame. But it's actually really amazing because what's in this here is vegetable oil. What this is doing is wicking the vegetable oil. Now, that's more exciting than it sounds because vegetable oil is heavy. So it's really difficult to wick it. But this is wicking this entire distance from here and burning merrily on the top of there with this incredibly sooty flame. It's sooty because there's not enough oxygen. And we can actually take care of that by putting a chimney on it. So if I put a chimney on it, then we get a draft going up there and we get enough oxygen, the soot disappears. And so it stops being sooty. So we can cure that by getting a complete burn with a chimney. The real thing is this oil wicking up this material. I mean, I've tried this already with um, paraffin, biodiesel and vegetable oil. And you can bet your bottom dollar I'll be trying it with other things. But it works beautifully. Now, that's actually huge because, of course, burning oils usually requires some kind of atomization, some kind of feed system, enough heat to do it and blah, blah, blah. Lots of things. Here, we're running this just like you would run a candle. And of course, that's incredibly stupidly simple because we've just stuck it in there. So what is it? Well, it's this stuff. This is the carbon felt that you find in cleaners. Things like what you've got above your oven, that sort of stuff. The stuff you put in your shoes to stop your feet smelling too much. That's all it is. It's carbon felt. Now, we actually sell this on the shop, and this is not an advertisement. It's relatively easy to get hold of, only in large amounts. So I bought a big roll of it, and I've got a whole lot left, and I've been using it for this. This carbon felt is an activated carbon felt sold in rolls for jobs like air filters. If you're willing to whip one out of your cooker, you'll find it in there. If you've got an odour eater, you're probably going to find it in there. What you do is grab yourself a bit of carbon felt as a roll and one of these. This is a 15mm plumbing fitting and just shove that in there like that. So there's a bit sticking out the bottom and then a bit sticking out the top. Trim off the top, stick it in your oil and wait for it to wick. It'll take about five minutes or so to wick up. But once it's wicked up, it'll stay there just wicking up that oil or that biodiesel or that kerosene. That is fantastic. Of course, there's one other issue about this. It's a carbon felt. It doesn't burn. So that is actually going to last forever. Well, you know, we're going to find out whether it lasts forever. But it's certainly going to last a lot longer than a standard wick. And the standard wick cannot wick vegetable oil, but this carbon felt can. OK, so I want to point out a really interesting property. <laughs> and I say interesting, of course. I mean in terms of wicks rather than in terms of, I don't know, world politics. But anyway, 
Here's an interesting property, property of it. There it is, burning away in vegetable oil. Now watch. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It won't set a light to the vegetable oil, which is pretty cool if you think about it. I mean, talk about a safety measure. It's because the vegetable oil as a bulk like this hasn't got enough heat to vaporize. And because it hasn't got enough heat to vaporize, it doesn't go in flames if you knock it over. In fact, you can muck around with it all you like. It'll get going again, or we can blow it out. But it doesn't burn the vegetable oil if you knock it over. That's got to be awesome. Okay, so, so far I can appreciate this video has been a bit of a, yeah, okay, that's uh, kind of interesting, but so what? The next bit is the so what? Plant pot, you'll notice three bricks around there. We pop that on there. And there we go. The plant pot forms a chimney, and of course it's ceramic. It's gonna get super hot. You kind of see, have seen these things, but using tea lights. Tea lights are not the most brilliant. This is one of those plant pot heaters on steroids, running on vegetable oil with our magical everlasting wick. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope it inspires you and you share what it is that you're doing.